actually been getting my calls? I've been busy. When are you coming home? They put that system in a few years ago after a break-in. Uh, don't worry. Neighborhood's a lot safer now. Good evening, boils and bulls. Welcome to another Round the Clock Fright segment. My name is Kimberly, and today I will be reviewing the 2019 film called BR1. Now, I know what you're all thinking. BR1. That sounds a little confusing. <laughs> well, you're not alone because I thought the same thing when I first heard the title. So I got recommended this movie from somebody that I work with. Um, she was skimming through Netflix one day and she saw the movie and she's not much of a big horror fan like me, but she told me about it and said, this looks like that's something down your alley. Um, maybe you'll be interested in seeing it. So of course I pulled up the movie on my Netflix, you know, looked at the synopsis and was like, okay, this looks like it may be a very interesting movie. So I waited till I got home that day, got my kids to bed, and I played the movie. And all I got to say was it wasn't a bad film. It was actually pretty good, but it definitely left me pretty empty at the end. Like, it was just one of those movies that, like, it just stayed on my mind, like, all for the rest of the night and then all day the next day, like, what the heck did I just watch? And it was just one of those, I want to say it was like scary or you had a lot of those, like, I guess, jump scares in the movie, but it was, it was definitely one of those psychological horror films where it messed with your mind and it definitely messed with mine <laughs> there. It left me also on a emotional roller coaster because there were some scenes that just had me saying, what the heck? And then other scenes that had me literally bawling my eyeballs out. But um, yes, this is the film I'm going to be talking about today because this movie has just been one of those movies that I really had to talk about. <laughs> um, so yeah. What brought you to LA? Trying to start a new life. Missed one here. Any pets? No. You got it. We're neighbors. Hey, listen, we're having a barbecue. You should come. Welcome. We like to make this place feel like a real neighborhood. And we all kind of take care of each other here. Now, if you haven't seen this movie, this movie is on Netflix. And if you don't want any spoilers, definitely do not continue watching further because I will be spoiling a few scenes in here that really just had me mind boggled. <laughs> but um, yeah, so if you don't want no spoilers, Turn this off, go watch the movie, it is on Netflix, and then come back and watch the review once you've seen it. So yes. So BR1 is pretty much this film about this girl who moves out to Los Angeles. Um, she's starting a new chapter in her life. She's um, trying to find an apartment to move into. She's got a job. Um, I can't remember for the life of me what, the, <laughs> what her job title was I thought she was like a secretary I can't remember without rewatching it I only watched it once all the way through I kind of want to watch it again but <laughs> but yeah so you know she's working in this office um sorry I heard something outside um but yeah she works in this office and you know so she's starting a new life new chapter she starts off living pretty much in a hotel room with her cat, it's just her and her cat. And um, she's, you know, apartment hunting. She finds this apartment in this whole apartment building, very nice, friendly neighbors. You know, she's thinking, okay, this might be the place I wanna move into, you know? So she goes to one of those open houses where they're showing off the apartment. There's a whole bunch of people in there. She's thinking, what are my chances? Because there's a lot of people in here that's filling out applications to get this apartment. But um, as she's uh, getting ready to, um, I think it was either before she goes in or before she leaves, um, she runs into this little little old lady who seems to, might have a little bit of dementia. Um, she almost falls, so she kind of pretty much helps her. And um, a lot of the neighbors pretty much um, grew on her, like, oh, okay, she's this nice girl, you know. So yeah, she goes in. Uh, the next day she finds out she did end up landing that apartment. Um, 
So it's now move in. And one of the things that they asked her on her application was if she had any animals. And of course, she lied and said she didn't. So you'll see that this actually bites her in the butt later. But um, but yeah, so now she's moving into this apartment, all excited because now everything is pretty much setting itself in place. She's got a really good job. She's got an apartment, really nice, friendly neighbors. Everything is going to go perfect for her. Not in the horror universe. We don't get a perfect life and ending like that. So things pretty much set sail from there. She meets this, uh, well, she met him on the first day of her open, open house visit. This really cute boy that she thinks that, you know, maybe she'll have like a, you know, relationship with or maybe go on a date with. Um, and on the day of her move in, as she's moving her stuff in, he offers her a couple of times to help move her stuff in. But of course she has to turn him down because she had to bring her cat. And just like she told the, uh, the apartment manager, she did not have animals. So she could not let her neighbor see that she had this cat. So of course she has to turn cute boy away as she's moving her stuff in. Um, and then once everything kind of settles in, um, she starts to notice, she starts to notice some things, um, going on, like a lot of noise coming from the pipes in her apartment that keeps her pretty much up all night and leaves her just exhausted throughout the day at work and stuff. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, this film did have a very slow pickup, but Right from the start, you just kind of got on into it because it was like, okay, you got these very nice, friendly neighbors, and it doesn't seem like something's right. So, does the plumbing do that every night? They want. so tired all the time do you hear that noise so yeah so i believe it was like her second or third night in this apartment she gets a note um and she also thinks it's this one guy who she meets like earlier on who offers her a book to read and she's thinking he's just this really creepy guy but she thinks this notes from him but she gets it on her door saying it's pretty much like an outline from the uh contract and that contract oh yeah contract you know, her lease where it says no animals were allowed on premises, but it, in like black words at the bottom, it says some people may be allergic to your cat, you stupid bitch. So somebody found out that she had a cat and now she's freaking out because it's like, okay, now they know she's got a cat. She might get kicked out of her apartment. So now she's got to try to figure out what to do. But um, I don't think she ever really does because by like the fourth night, She's in her, she's in her apartment and um, she's, you know, laying in bed. She, you know, smells something coming from the living room and, you know, like it smells like just something got awful because she gets up out of bed, you know, walks out into the living room. <laughs> this part had me in tears because I hated this part, but she walks over to her kitchen where there was that same note that she found on her door about the cat. And what does she realize? The person or whoever it was threw her cat in the oven and cooked it alive. And anybody that knows me, I have like a soft heart for animals and I hate in horror movies, animal death scenes. It just, it was horrible. And it just made me go and want to love on my cat because like, that was awful. Um, so yeah, she finds her cat pretty much cooking in the oven and she's flipping out, not knowing, you know, who the heck's in her apartment and who did this and who does she find? She finds out that it's the cute boy that was next door who broke into her apartment and now he's trying to kidnap her. So, so yeah, so then now everything starts to unravel with the neighbors and why everybody's just so perfect. But she wakes up into another, pretty much another room that's pretty much another apartment built or apartment where it's just pretty much empty. It's like a trap for people who come and move into this apartment. But she finds out pretty much 
the plot of everything that's happening is that these really perfect neighbors have this um, thing where they like to, um, they when people come to their open houses, they try to find the perfect, pretty much companion that will help build a community that will help better, I guess, better, I don't know how to explain it. It's just something like, it's supposed to be like this, you know, they're building a better community and it's supposed to pretty much save them. I don't know. It kind of, it definitely reminded me a lot of um, Midsommar where, you know, it was just, you had like, of course, the, uh, the community, which was another part in another country where you got these perfect people who are trying to build their community with newer people and just help build it and grow. And that's what was pretty much happening in this apartment community. So yeah, they pretty much now kidnapped her. Now they have to pretty much have her adapt to their lifestyle. And they do a lot of pretty much torturous things to her to get her to, you know, they, in other words, they have to try to set her mind to scare her because then if she's too scared, like, I guess like if they're tormenting her, and if she says no, she knows, you know, that they may hurt her. So it's their way of, you're going to stay here. And if you don't do what we say, we're going to hurt you. So you get a lot of those in this movie. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's like I said, you, you, as you're watching it, it's just messing with your mind psychologically. And it's just, it's kind of creepy. Like, and then all these neighbors, they're, they're not as sweet as you think. And then there's this one scene that really kind of got to me. Um, it kind of, again, reminded me of Midsommar where you had that scene with the people who are standing on top or the two older people who are standing on top of the mountain. And then, um, to help better better their community, they had to pretty much take their lives because they're older and they can't do anything to help anymore because they're older. And it was just like, what? But that one older lady that um, the main girl helps out in the beginning, she's obviously losing you know, her mind to dementia. And she can't help the community anymore. So she has to pretty much take her life. And that was like, oh, that part just tore me up too. It was, it was horrible. Like, I mean, yeah, I definitely just got lost for words. But and it was sad too, because she, I liked her character. She was a really nice older lady. And it was kind of like she was the rock to the whole community and she can't do anything to help them anymore because she's growing old and but it was just yeah it was awful run run Uh, one scene I would like to mention um, that really got to me, like it just was so sad, and I was literally like bawling my eyeballs out. Apart from the cat, because that's not, that scene was sad enough. But there is a scene later on after she's already gone through her torments with the community, and she is now accepted into this community. Um, her dad tries to come to find her. Because apparently this community pushed away a lot of people, but they didn't push away her dad. So her dad flies out to Los Angeles to try to pretty much come see his daughter, who he hasn't talked to in probably like months now. Um, and the people in the community says that he is pretty much going to be a big, um, he's not, he's not going to be helpful and he's going to be more of a setback to their community and told her that she has to get rid of him. And I don't mean like get rid of him as in kill him or anything, but like has to like pretty much push him away. And um, if she doesn't do this, then the community was going to kill him. So she has to pretty much push her father away by saying some stuff to him to get him to leave. And that part was just like, Ooh. I ain't even just getting all teary up thinking about that scene. But um. So he comes in, you know, she's talking to him and she's already got some resentment towards her dad because you find out in her backstory 
that her mom her mom died when she was a few years prior to cancer and um her dad cheated on her mom with um the mom's hospital lady um that was taking care of her so she has a little resentment towards him so her dad her mom died knowing not knowing what happened so it was a little bit easy for her to do it but at the same time it wasn't because just as you're saying okay this isn't going to be easy for her to just push him away because she uses that to her advantage to get him to go but then he turns around and says that he knows that he did wrong that he wants to build a relationship with her you know and um she just had to <laughs> push him away even further and I was just like I can't even talk about it why is this <laughs> but yeah so she had to push him away further because just as they were hugging and she came to a I guess what do you call it a forgiveness towards him you see that cute boy that cute neighbor boy coming out of the darkness and was about to kill him and she's like no you know she didn't want him to die so she had to push him away and say some very hurtful things so that part really got to me <laughs> but um but yeah this this movie was definitely um if you're looking for a movie that's not scary that doesn't have those jump scares but that has that psychological effect i mean that one's definitely you know got that it definitely reminds me of midsummer with that because midsummer didn't scare me with the jump scares it just psychologically like ooh. but um it is on netflix it's trending now so it was like kind of had me wondering if this movie was really good um overall i thought the movie was unique it was good um there's just a few scenes that I wasn't pretty much a fan of, but <laughs> but overall the concept of this whole film was um, really well written out and what they were trying to go for, they really did achieve that in this movie. Um, so now as your confusion starts to go away, BR1 stands for, or I, I, maybe I said it backwards, I think it's 1BR, not BR1, uh, one bedroom, one bedroom apartment community. So yeah, that pretty much sums up the title. Um, but yes, so I definitely recommend this movie for anybody who's looking for a good psychological horror movie. It's up there next to Midsommar. And that other one that was also directed by the same director, Midsommar, I can't think of the name of it, um, at the top of my head. And that's pretty bad because I just watched it not that long ago. Please. Please, I just want to go home. This is your home. So that is pretty much my review. Um, I also would like to mention that the acting in this, or the acting in this movie was really good too. Definitely well played out. Um, the main girl, um, she did a tremendous job playing her part because she had to pretty much you know start off with this I guess she was this more of a shy girl and then she has to turn into cold and shut down from everything so she did a really good job and the oh, the actor who played the father was also amazing because he really just kind of felt he definitely really felt for his character too um Anybody that I recognized in this movie, acting-wise, the only one I can think of, and I can't think of her actual name in real life, I just remembered her from the uh, show American Heart Story. Um, she played um, in the season two Asylum um, as uh, Pepper. That's I, And again, she actually plays another weird character in this, so <laughs> she definitely knows how to get that roll down but she was also really tremendous in this um other than her i can't think of anybody else that i recognize all new fresh faces to me at least but everybody did a good job on this on this movie um but yes and as you've noticed i did not mention anything about the end because you definitely have to I have to see this in the i'm not going to spoil too much on this movie because it is really good and it is on netflix so if you have a Netflix account, you have to go watch it um, for all of you horror fans. But uh, 
yes, that is my review. And thank you for joining me. Um, again, we do post our videos weekly. Um, and we, you know, if you like what you see, definitely subscribe to our channel below. Um, and yeah, you all have a good day.